Okay, they're coming in. Oh, hello so everyone. Hi. People. It's people. <laughs> I need to get out of the digital people. Did love people. Can anybody see the chat? Is the chat working? Hello. Hi. Oh yeah, so then we get a hi. Okay, great. Yeah, now we got hi's, hellos. Hello, hello, hi. Yay. Welcome everyone. We'll get started in a few minutes. Look at, look at the numbers just go up and up and up. Oh my gosh. It's so funny to see all these names I recognize from all the shipping labels. <laughs> from all of the shipping labels. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know that name. I know that name. All of our imaginary friends. <laughs> all of our imaginary friends. It's great. Well, invisible, invisible friends. Yeah, yes, they're very true. real. They're not imaginary. It's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nope, you are not the only one with a margarita. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. Everybody's on chat is on to panelists only. So if you want to switch it to panelists and attendees, so that there you go, Kimberly, you got it. Oh, uh, not just talking to us. Yeah, yeah. Y'all can talk to each other too. There we go. Hello again. Love it. <laughs> oh, they want to know what you're drinking, Jenny. I am drinking uh, Diet Coke and, oh my God, uh, this giant bottle of <laughs> Kitty Chesney rum, which I have drunk throughout the entire virtual tour. Um, Kitty Chesney makes a, I wouldn't say it's a great rum, but he makes a rum and it's, uh, it's cheap and you can buy big bottles and it has little, um, I like it has little hand things for you, which is kind of sweet, but at the same time, it's sort of cheating because that's less alcohol. I'm like, oh, that's a whole shot here and a whole shot here. So I think they I'm, probably made the bottle taller. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> long, but it's a whole divot of booze that you're missing out on. Exactly. Is it? Yes, and it's a, it says Kenny mm -hmm. Chesney has always brought his inspiration from the islands. And I don't know what <laughs> island it is that Kenny Chesney is. It's Long Island, island actually. It might be. <laughs> um, but he should totally have sponsored my book tour because I drank this every single stop. It's so heavy. Oh my God. Okay. So we've had the doors open for about three minutes now. And the numbers are going, it's kind of leveled off. So uh welcome everybody to our april fantastic strange links author q a this one is very different because the author <laughs> usually q a is the author and and we tried to do a split screen but we didn't have enough time to video that so we're gonna do something a little different uh so we're actually gonna do like an actual author event jenny is gonna read from her book and then and vicky you don't have to look at vicky and i while that happens which would be great for vicky and i yeah, don't, don't look at us. Don't look at us. Put um, us on speaker view. Yeah, and they, and they roll, they roll their eyes as I, and they're like, we've heard it before, Jenny, Jesus. Uh, and then uh, when she's done with the reading, we'll come back on and we'll turn it over to Q&A from the audience. So if you could do us a favor, um, somebody needs to turn off their mic. I'm not sure. Um, None of the pan none of the attendees can turn on your mic, so I'm not sure who that would be. So when you if you have any questions for Jenny, uh, put them in the Q and A, not the chat. That way, uh, Vicky and I can see them, and we'll come back on after she reads. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce you. I, I told her I wasn't going to read her bio because that seems silly, but to Jenny Lawson, author of Broken in the best possible way. I couldn't remember the title, but I know the ISBN. That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and. Please enjoy this reading by Jenny Lawson. Yay! Yay. It's me! Um, y'all. So, okay, wait, all I see is, is Elizabeth's face frozen and really big. Um, but I'm sure you can see me. I'm, I'm gonna say that you can see me. Can you see me? Because, yeah, you can. Okay, good. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, look, I, I'm going to print out this whole thing of people saying, we can see you, Jenny. And then next time I'm feeling bad, I'll be like, I'm seen. Um, Elizabeth, your face did not go away. I'm going to do a screenshot. Um, at least, at least for me. 
adorable. Uh, okay. So first off, thank you guys for being here tonight on like a weird Wednesday. Oh, me. Okay, good. All right. Uh, on a weird Wednesday um, evening. Uh, so I'm going to do a reading and I, I will say, so, so I was like, okay, um, maybe we should have a monitor for this moderator for this event. And then, um, and then I was like, yeah, maybe not. And then Victor was like, oh, I'll moderate it. I'll ask, ask the questions. And I was like, that is a terrible, terrible idea. Um, and uh, then today about an hour ago, he came in and he was like, I've been working on my questions all day. And I was like, you don't get to ask any questions because I'm 100% sure that they would be like, do you know how many gallons of water you use every time you flush the toilet. Um, uh, so he might pop in at some point, maybe, but probably not. We'll see. Um, I am going to, before I get started with the reading, first I'm going to say thank you so much for your incredible support, not only for this weird little book that somehow um, is a New York Times bestseller, and actually I just I just heard uh, today that, uh, so it was on the New York Times list for three weeks on the nonfiction list. And then today um, it fell off the nonfiction list. And I was like, well, that, I mean, there's a ton of like really good books that have come on. And so I'm like, that, that makes sense. Um, but then they were like, but it's number seven on the New York Times audio bestseller list. And I didn't even know they had an audio bestseller list. So. So now, in a way, you're going to get to hear the audio because I'm going to read to you. Okay, so the chapter that I'm going to read is um, a series of, it kind of goes back and forth and back and forth, and probably a lot of you have already read this, and you're going to be like, we've already heard it. I, I don't need you to say it again, but I'm going to just because I'm drinking, and uh, we'll see if I can get through this without laughing out loud. Um, the... The chapter that I'm gonna read is the one that is about, it's about half um, things that I wrote and half of it are uh, things that were tweeted at me. And so when I read it, I'm going to, um, I'm not gonna give like, when you look in your book, you'll see the actual, the, there we go. When you look in your book, you'll see the actual, um, the credit of the, the person, but I'm not gonna say it when I do it because then otherwise it gets really long and it's like Cardinal Biggingsworth, blah, 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 whatever. So I'm just gonna say what the tweets are and then go back and forth between the tweets and me. And um, this is gonna be great. Also, I've been drinking because I was very panicky about a half an hour ago and I could either do Xanax or I could do rum. And I chose rum, so let's see if this was a good decision. Awkwarding brings us together. Not long ago, I sent a small tweet out into the universe. Airport cashier, have a safe flight, me. You too, I can never come back here again. It was a tiny glimpse into the awkwardness of being me, but it set off a tsunami of responses that I still haven't entirely recovered from. Shockingly, it was not from people telling me how stupid I am, but from people sharing how stupid they are. I once high-fived a retail staffer who was helping me. Turns out she was waving to a friend outside the store, still not over it. I texted my boss at the end of my first day on a new job with heading out, love you. It was intended for my boyfriend. An elderly man presented his discount card to me and I said, you're getting ready to expire. I could not recover. I talk fast and I once told a customer at a bookstore that a new novel had made the man liquor bong list rather than the man booker long list. I had a cashier extend his hand slightly sideways and I shook it. He was asking for my coupons. A friend's grandmother avoids funerals because instead of regrets, she gets too nervous and congratulates the family. I once loudly proclaimed at work, that's how the dildos went extinct. Dodos. It was the donos. A friend thanks me for coming to her husband's funeral. My reply, anytime. Thousands of people sent me these confessions of mortifying encounters that they had had with friends or family or total strangers. And then thousands of people read those stories and shared the horrifying 
embarrassing thing that they had been carrying around all of their lives. And it was glorious. I recently answered a coworker's, how are you? Chewbacca like groan and was too embarrassed to fix it. The cashier said hi to me and I said artichokes because that's what she was holding. My coworker asked what I was eating for lunch. I told her placenta. I meant polenta. Sent a female coworker an email attachment with here you ho instead of you go. I did it twice. I once accidentally texted my boss a sound clip of me flushing a toilet. At a funeral, I say, sorry to hear your father was sick. My friend says, thanks. I say, was it serious? They say, yes, you're at his funeral. Went to mass, guy in front of me turned around and said, peace be with you. I replied, pleased to meet you and shook his hand. The more stories that came in, the more I could relate to and I wasn't alone. Most people laughed and cringed along with the confessors until they found the ones that resonated with them. And then they responded, oh my God, I did that once too. And let me tell you how it was even worse. A friend went and placed her order in the drive-thru. She then heard, could you drive up to the speaker? You're talking to the trash can. My mom told my friends that I loved my silver bullet, which is a vibrator. She got the name wrong. It is a magic bullet blender. I pulled out a panty liner instead of a $5 bill to pay for my lunch. In a public bathroom with my sister, while on the toilet, I reach under the stall divider, grab her ankle to scare her. It was not her. And as these strangers shared mortifying stories that had haunted them during sleepless nights at 3 a.m., they suddenly felt celebrated rather than ashamed as their unique, ridiculous tales brought people around the world laughter. The terrible details only made the stories more human and perfect. My grandma sees my big barreled curling iron and asks why I leave my lady agitator lying around for everyone to see. I went to the movie theater and asked for popcorn and Reese's penises. Pulled into the gas station and was on the wrong side of the pump for my gas, camp, gas cap. Drove around to the other side and did it again. Just drove away. Working at a hardware store, I picked up the intercom phone, forgot what I was doing, and loudly said, hello, to the entire store. First date, I've never eaten pistachios before, crunched into a handful, shell and all. I just pretended that's how I preferred them. I was looking for clip-on sunglasses to go over my prescription glasses. Asked the pharmacist at CVS if they sold strap-ons. As the stories continued to flood in, I watched people slowly realizing that no one really wants to celebrate the size of your yacht or hair or waist or penis. What really brought their world together was dropping the, the pretense that everything is shiny and perfect so that for just a moment, we could all accept how wonderfully human we really are. I frequently wait for stop signs to turn green. A dermatologist, my nurse asked if I needed anything else. I inexplicably said, a Christmas hug. I never went back. I was giving someone a Brazilian wax. I inadvertently glued my bangly bracelet to her labia. At a museum, there was a section on animal lactation. I sneak up behind my sister and whisper in her ear canal, ha ha, animal tit milk wasn't my sister. Chatting with a new neighbor, a spider crawls into my bikini top. I scream, get it off and rip off my top, flashing six people. Surviving mortification makes you stronger and more resilient because you have no other choice but to move on. Either you can let it eat at you or you can celebrate it and bring joy to someone else who will cringe and giggle like mad along with you. Accidentally making shit awkward is such a familiar, vulnerable, and underrated accomplishment. I warned a coworker about a creepy man lurking in the parking lot. It was her husband. Had my laptop hooked up to a projector for a work meeting with executives, received an email from a friend. It said in all caps, what the fuck is rhubarb? Husband discreetly spit gristle into a napkin. Waiter picks up the napkin with a flourish. Gristle takes flight, lands on another table. I bought a new dress for my grandma's funeral. I arrive, my cousins look shock, shocked, they are laughing. Turns out grandma had the same dress. My first gyno appointment with my mom's doctor. During the exam, he said that I looked like my mom. I asked if that was common. He meant my face. 
Days after I wrote my initial tweet, the responses were still rolling in. It got so much attention that the New York Times wrote an entire article about it. Socialites and millionaires spend their entire life trying to get mentioned in the Times, and turns out what really appeals to people are true stories of fucking up in incredibly. To this, I cannot read these responses without crying. Trying to be inconspicuous, I hid a tampon in my sleeve and headed to the bathroom, waved hi to someone, and it flew across the floor. I just kept walking. Emailed the entire company that I worked at with the subject line, cock in, cock out report, rather than clock in, clock out report. Farted very loudly with a coworker right outside my office. I picked up my cell phone and it, it was my dad and the farts were just his ringtone. So good. While at the boat harbor, I saw a jellyfish and screamed, look at those testicles, as a fisherman walked by. Tentacles. They were tentacles. While we had company over, my son toddled down the stairs, swinging my corded vibrator exactly like a nunchuck. When Stacy's mom came out, I asked a friend's roommate, Stacy, if her mom had it going on. She apparently died. So, and this is what humanity is made up of. Not saving orphaned otters from fires or flashy celebrities. It is made of unexpected farts and acute awkwardness and mortifying accidents and horrifying autocorrects. It is made of the very things that only humans can truly pull off and it's amazing. The girl in the next stall started talking to me so I kept chatting with her. Heard her say, someone keeps talking to me. She was on the phone. Fell while working out, skidded across the floor, rolled on my side and yelled, paint me like one of your French ladies. Tasting beers at a brewery, I poured out the ones that I didn't like into a bucket like at a wine. It was their tip jar. Sent a corporate email apologizing for all the incontinence rather than the inconvenience. Also, I cited Satan instead of Sarah. Passed very bad gas alone in a copy, work, copy room at work. Then my coworker walked in. I blamed the terrible smell on the radiator. The coworker calls maintenance. Waiting while my husband was using a porta potty, two city workers pick it up and start walking away. I am too shocked to say he's inside. I called the doctor and said I needed to make an appointment with the vaginacologist. The receptionist starts laughing. I just hang up immediately. Here's what I have learned. Whenever something truly mortifying happens, you have a choice. You can celebrate you for the rest of your life or you can celebrate it as today's awkward moment is tomorrow's fantastic story. Your mortifying story will invite other people's story into your world and then suddenly there are so many of us sharing horrifying confessions that the people who don't have awkward moments are suddenly the awkward months and awkward ones. And for once, we, the artless can all feel a little sorry for them as they will never join this strange community or know our secret handshake. At a friend's dad's funeral, how her mom was forgetting that I had been to that funeral six months before. Her response, still dead. Waved at a guy in a garden wearing sunglasses and a hat many times in passing over a weekend, got no responses, later realized it was a scarecrow. In line at a grocery store, I say, tell the nice man goodbye, look down, realize, I didn't bring the kids to the store. Asked the pharmacist if I could get some euthanasia for a cold that just wouldn't go away. She said that seemed drastic. Echinacea, that's what I was asking for. Presented myself, hi, I'm Ramona. The other person said, we have the same name. My answer, awesome, what's your name? I once tried to remove a stray hair from the car of a cute guy sitting in front of me. Turns out it was attached to his ear. So the next time that you do something incredibly embarrassing, please remind yourself that you are being the most human that you possibly can be. And you are witnessing a mission to forgive themselves all the future embarrassment that lies in store for them. And I thank you for it. In fact, next time you do something mortifying, you can tell everyone that you did it for me. And technically that means it's all my fault. Everyone wins. Startled by a spider, it was a tomato top. I go to pick it up actual spider hiding behind it, screamed, fell over backward. 
on the phone to my boyfriend on a train. I panicked. I said, oh my God, I have to go. I can't find my phone. He said, how are we talking? Gave the waiter what I thought was a Groupon and got very huffy when he said, we don't take these. It was a recipe for turkey casserole. I called my husband in a panic because I saw a van that looked just like ours in an accident. He said, you're driving the van. Responded to a text message from my boss. I tried to write, thank you so much. But after not typing it perfectly, it autocorrected to, thanks, douche. I told the hairdresser that I wanted a blunt cut, but I moved the N to the second word. I said it three times. Thought I was applying chapstick from my pocket. Turns out I had just put a tampon to my mouth in front of a whole car sales showroom of people. If you have managed to read these wonderful confessions without doing that thing where you're giggling so much that people are staring and so you see so you try to explain to them what's so funny but you're cry laughing so hard that you can't get it out and then they just stare at you like you're insane and somehow that makes it worse and then you laugh harder and then you get mad that they aren't appreciating how fantastically wonderful it all is then we can't be friends and honestly I'm a little bit embarrassed for you <sighs> oh my gosh that was so scary that was awesome <laughs> I laughed so many times and I've read the chapter and I still laugh so many times. Uh, <laughs> I still like, laugh. I've read it so I, many times. It's, it's so, they're so relatable, these stories. That's why I love them. I keep thinking of my own, but I'm not going to share them here. What? <laughs> no? Not even a little now, one? Now you have to. Now you have to. No. no. <laughs> That was like You're the only one I think of that is like so mortifying to me was like working at the information desk at Book People and this couple came up with a baby on their hip and he had one shoe on, he had a little like Nike high top shoe and he's like, we lost this other shoe and I was like, oh, I'm like, attention, Book People staff get on the speaker, the 28,000 square foot store. Have you seen a black child's shoe? Oh, Jesus. I mean, a, ch a <laughs> child's shoe that is. But for, I was just like, and I just like hung up. Meanwhile, somebody had already found the shoe. And <laughs> all of my coworkers are like, what kind of shoes do black kids wear? I was like, I learned a very important grammatic lesson there too. Color modifier always immediately precedes the noun. It's important. Also, I, I like that I'm not the only one losing shoes in bookstores. That makes me <laughs> feel you. Yeah. Yay. You so and I toddlers. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyway. I match with toddlers. It totally works. Yep. Oh it my works. gosh. I had I had one not too long ago where somebody um I was like DMing them and they were like, you know, um my like adult child has had, you know, some problems with um, you know, different, you know, mental illness stuff and your book helps and whatever. And so I had was like, you know, back and forth doing, you know, DMs and I a scent and I and I was like you know you know you know wishing you luck and whatever and then I wrote and you know how like when you write something really fast and you hit enter and you're like wait did that did I write that right and what I had written was give your kid a it was supposed to say hug for me but I hit the wrong key and instead it said give your kid a hun for me h-u-n and it autocorrected to gun give your kid a gun <laughs> for me <laughs> Thank God, thank God we were like live DMing and I was like, oh my God, that was, oh an, I was so, so, and she was like, this is hilarious. Actually, he would think that was really funny. So yeah, I was like, Jesus, what? It was what we keep talking about how we want you to like go rogue on Twitter. <laughs> like, oh, maybe she'll offend somebody. <laughs> my kid was really struggling and Jenny Lawson said, give him a gun. <laughs> give him a gun. <laughs> Exactly. They cut off all the bottom parts. It's always oh, funny how man. like every other letter will like stick or something like that, but the enter key always works. The send key always works with like a breath of air. It's gone. Like oh, I, there it goes. Sent an, I sent an email one time where I was asking an author about some titles and it said titties and it was <laughs> gone. Just tell me about, tell me more about tell me, your tell titties. Me, tell me about your titties. Tell me more about your titties. That's what uh, I meant. It's a brand. It's fine. Yeah. It's, it's fine. fine. I, I will constantly, it's sort of sad how I actually have this. I have all these friends who are dead on Facebook and I don't know if I am I supposed to unfriend them or not. 
But then like when it pops up and it's like, oh, it's people's birthdays. But since I have 5,000 friends, I just like really quickly, I'm like, happy birthday, enter, happy birthday, enter. And it's like, you know, 20 people every day. And so I get to like the fifth one and I'm like, oh shit, did I just say happy birthday to that person that's dead? And I have to go back on it and find their thing and be like, in heaven. I don't know. Because I don't want to delete it. I don't want to be like, oh, I didn't mean happy. Well, I don't think they're going to message you back. That'd be crazy if they did. <laughs> yeah, but you know their family's monitoring you, right? Right, uh, right. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Okay, so we've got some questions in the Q&A. As a reminder, everybody should put your questions for Jenny there. But, um, oh my gosh, Jessica Friedman meant to sign my email. Thanks, Jess, but sent thanks, Jews, instead. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Okay. Lots of, lots of great mortification moments happening. Yeah. Um, okay, so Don asks, Jenny, what is your favorite chapter? It can be from this book or any of your other books. What is oh, the one that yeah. is your favorite? Pick your favorite kid. I think, <laughs> yeah, for real. I think my very favorite chapter ever, I think is probably Stanley the Magical Squirrel. Just because <laughs> it is such a great story that, that we told over and over before I shared it with anybody. And, um, and I remember, that when first was like oh maybe I'll write a book that was one of the very first chapters that I wrote that I was like I think this is an okay chapter and there was somebody who was like a like a writer editor and uh, and they were like oh I'd, I'd like to hear I'd like to hear you know your your story and so I was like okay and so I'm reading it to them in a parking lot this is I don't know 10 15 years ago and they get they're just like up in space they're just like uh-huh uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. And so I just stop in the middle. I just stop and I'm like, anyway, that's it. And they were like, uh-huh, mm -hmm. needs some work. It needs some work. And I was like, it's not even done, what? Um, but, it's, but it's always like, it's always one of my favorite chapters to kind of see like, are you the right sort of person to read my book? Because if you get in there, you're just grossed out or it's too much um and there's nothing wrong with that like there's a lot of people who I super love who are just like your books don't do it for me and that's okay like I'm not for everyone um but I always feel like like that chapter should just be free to everyone so that if they look at it and they go okay I laughed and I feel bad for laughing you know you're gonna enjoy the rest of the books and if you it's the Jenny laugh, Lawson litmus test I yeah, it. you yes. put it somewhere and you're like, are you considering buying a Jenny Lawson book? Read this yeah. first. Yeah. Let me offend you first. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel I now? <laughs> I love it. Uh, how many taxidermied critters do you own? Do you know the number? I don't. How um, many are behind you? Let's just like, let's see. turn around just and count them. Okay, there's Kate <laughs> Witherspoon. There's Rory is up right there. And Rory there. two is up there. Mm -hmm. And all of these mice are taxidermied and all, oh my gosh. Oh, actually, do you want to see like the sweetest? Oh my God. These taxidermy mice are so fantastic. I actually have a bunch of them and they're in, some of them are under glass. They're, they're really, glass. really cute actually. God, they're so they make me so happy. Oh, let's see. So Lee Mai does these. L E A M A I. Mm -hmm. And so look, it's a little, it's a little uh -huh. Spartacus. And all like all of their little pieces, like the hat comes off. The little, the little shield, like handmade shield goes on and then there's this one who's a vampire hunter and look she's a crossbow a tiny crossbow oh so good and then she made me Jenny and I argue about the taxidermy a lot but I like the mice <laughs> yeah, so these are cute good. well that's right? that one's you isn't it that one's a me she made one of me and then I have some other ones that are that she made too that are behind me but they're under glass so they're kind of harder to these are these are fun to. Yeah, yeah, and, they're super and cute. Have, and they're so little that I think people would be like, oh. They're less threatening to Elizabeth okay, well, yeah. than the other ones. Right? It's true. I actually think that we should make an entire diorama at the store just out of taxidermy mice doing like fairy tale things. 
<laughs> little stuff. Like, this this, this right. very dead silence. Mm. <laughs> oh, We're so going to dedicate like, a full FTE to that. <laughs> It'll be great. Just a diorama of taxidermied mice. Your job every day, every week. Yes. Change the diorama of the mice taxidermy. I love exactly. it though. Um, okay, so Denise asked, I love the virtual book tour. Sorry, my 12 year old just got home. Hi. Um, does anybody want him? Uh, <laughs> love you. Uh, love the virtual book tour. Do you think that is something you'll be able to do even after we get back to normal? Um, yeah. I yeah, think it's um, a great question. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's weird because when this started and I, you know, I was very worried about, you know, will the book do well and I'm not going to actual places and I was very worried about it. But um, what, I, what I noticed as I started to get into it is how absolutely amazing it was to be able to, um, not have to panic about like traveling. Um, I haven't gotten sick, which normally at this point, I'm like so, so sick and like mentally in a bad place. And so it's so much better for me. And what I've also found is that there were so many people who, and I really, I thought people would be like really mad and be like, you know, if you really cared, you would travel and you'd come see us. And instead what I saw were all of these people who were like, I'm so happy because I have never been able to go to one of these because I have anxiety or, you know, I'm too far away or, you know, there's something. Um, and it, it really, it really speaks to me as well because there's so many things that have happened during COVID that I'm like, this is actually kind of awesome. Can this be the new normal? Can this, I mean, there's so many things like the, the Mayo Clinic asked me to, to speak about having invisible disabilities and they had asked me before and I was like, I can't because I have a disability and it makes me too anxious and so no. And so this year they were like, well, we're just doing it virtual, can you do it? And I was able to. And so there are all of these things that now I'm like, can we keep some of this? Can we keep the, the slack and the ability to, you know, just like do, things differently, you know, just because we've always done it one way doesn't mean that we can't learn from, from this. Yeah. And I think it's so great too, that like, you're able to, in these events, reach people in markets that you couldn't go to. So I, yeah, I think that there are lots of ways that I think book tours will change in the future, um, along with everything else. So, uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was interesting when I when I first um, when I first was like, oh, let's do some virtual stops. You know, I got a lot of like, people don't really go to these, and the, and I was like, but maybe they will. And I was so lucky that I had some like really good friends who just were like, well, you know, maybe it'll make it better if I'm if I moderate. And so I had like all these like Samantha Irby and Neil Gaiman and Judy Bloom and you know just like just great great people. And um, I think we probably did better on the virtual tour. There are probably more people who came on the virtual tour that I actually saw um, on, on the physical tour, which is, which is nice. The only bad thing is that I don't ever get, you know, the end when you, when people would come around and I would get, like get to have like that, that, that moment of like, hey, what's, how, how's it going? And, and also I never get the, um, the photographs, you know, like you, there's always the, the time when you're like, can I take a picture? So while I'm thinking about it, if you want to get a picture, just move your laptop around backward and get your phone and then look, we'll, we'll all look really cute. And I'll look, I'll, this I'll look, look really this. cute. Yeah, we all, we'll all look cute. Yeah, all right. we'll look <laughs> I'm sorry, that actually, hold on, no. give me 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Never. You need to hold something Burn cute. It. Yeah. Where's Henry? I don't know. Yeah. Where's my cat? Here. Bring hold on. Here. Oh, okay. Hold on. We're almost ready. Oh my gosh. Sweet baby. Everybody get your selfie. Okay, this feels really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we all froze. <laughs> it's like, is it so People working? are like, is it over? What happened? Uh, Bruno funny. was asleep and was like, what are you doing to me? 
<laughs> okay. So Suzanne has rightfully pointed out that we have not asked the Strange Links Five to you. Uh-huh. And this is a Strange Links event. So you're in the hot seat, Jenny Lawson. I don't remember the question. Okay. Well, the, the first one's the zombie one, right? Yeah, it's two weeks into yes. the zombie apocalypse. Where are you? Where dead. are you? Dead. One hundred percent dead. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the most interesting I would, people are, I think, actually. Right? I would, I would wait and use my death in, like, I try to use it in a good way where I'd be like, oh, you guys need to leave. Look, I'll create a distraction oh. so that for some reason. But I'm You'd, not like, gonna martyr yourself. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say that you would feed somebody. Like, you would try to kill yourself <laughs> in a situation where someone could eat your body. <laughs> You know, there's a song that I love that's all, it's like a zombie love song. And it's, um, our love story could be kind of gory. Oh, oh my God. What is it? Somebody's going to know it. Anybody? Oh, yeah. Anybody chat? know this zombie rap? On, Jenny just did. Um, uh, nope. Okay, nobody knows it. You made it up. You should record the song. If I were a zombie, I'd never eat your brains. I just want your heart. I just want your heart. I just want your heart. Oh, oh, oh. if I were a zombie, I I'd like never it. eat your brains. I just want your heart. I just want your heart. I just want your heart. I want your see Ste- zombie song by Stephanie. Maybe well, like that's zombie. it. That's Isn't it? it? Yeah. It's very good. Y'all should go like YouTube it because it's it's fantastic. That oh, sounds amazing. Okay, so there's that one. There. Somebody somebody put some of them in the chat. And one was, how do you like your eggs? How, oh, I like my eggs uh, deviled. Ooh. Yes, with pickles, have... pickles and paprika oh. and, um, and pecans. A chunky deviled. Wait, 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 yes. wait, okay, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait. You're a good Southern girl. I'm confused. Egg, so egg yolks, pecans. Pecans? And pickles. Pecans, and the, pickles, and the mayonnaise, and the mustard, mustard paprika. Ooh. Yeah, I am um, okay. Next time, I'm gonna give that a shot. There's a lot. There's a lot going on there. I don't. I don't like condiments, so deviled eggs are my nightmare. Yeah. Oh my god, we're gonna so trade good. pimento cheese recipes later. It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, I love oh, pimento so, cheese. Okay. I have four I tubs of it in my refrigerator right now, and they will be gone by the end of the week. Why? <laughs> Every every day that's, I eat a pimento cheese sandwich. That's just There's any not. meal prepping. You're like I meal prepped. I bought a bunch of pimento cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've asked two of the five. What do you? Okay. Oh, no, that's that has to be the last one. Okay, no, okay, that. Oh, what is the other one? You should know, Jenny. Come on, you make that's people do this. Oh, what's your favorite word? What's your favorite word? Oh, tintinabulation, the ringing of bells. Tintinabulation. Ray Bradbury is the one that exposed me to it. The tintinabulation of bells. Like, I love a word that is so beautiful that it sounds like what it is. And like, you don't even have to look it up. You're just like, oh, the tintinabulation of bells. Of course, that's what it is. So you know good. what that is. It's an automatopoeia. Oh, that is the UIL lit crit team. <laughs> UIL. Oh, yeah, y'all were lit crit. First place district. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got three of the six. Yeah. One of the good ones that popped up was, what would you ask the devil for? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay, let's Sam see. Sam Irby's I, question. You can, that yeah. Was, that was a I, bonus question. That was, that was a bonus. I would ask the devil for, I get probably more time to answer that question <laughs> because I'm sure that there's a really good answer, but I don't know what it is. Like, Let's say now you know what you do to these people if they have not prepared. <laughs> if they have not gotten like the question. Yeah, the people who actually have to answer these with you and not in writing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love this one. Michelle reminds us the most underrated book. Oh my God. See, do you, now See, you, you ask these questions and I am always like, I'm almost positive she doesn't have an answer for these questions. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I 100% do not have it. Uh, okay. Um, Let's see. The most underrated book. I'm going to go with, uh, it's not really underrated because P- 
people, and I'm sort of restating myself, um, but people already know him, but there's this book. Hang on, I'll get it. Let's see. Oh. Okay, so there's this heavy. <laughs> there's this book that um, when I was a kid, I used to steal all my grandmother's uh, books. And one of the books, um, when she went into the memory care clinic, she gave me like all of her Stephen King and all like, she liked really dark books like I did. And she, she super inspired me with just the weirdest possible stuff. And I was like, there's this one book that you had and I can't remember the name of it, but it was Ray Bradbury. And it had like these weird creatures drawn on it. And it was the first time I ever read Ray Bradbury and it was, so good Anna she's like I have no idea what you're talking about and and who knows if she like would have known before the you know dementia set in but she she was just like yeah I don't know I don't know if it's if it's not if it's not in the in the stack somebody probably took it already and um so I looked everywhere for it and I told my mom about it I, I asked booksellers and they were like I'm pretty sure that book doesn't exist because it just doesn't and then finally and I told my mom and and I finally went to uh, an antique store and I was going through and I was with my mom and it popped up and it was right there. Mm -hmm. oh, and it's, wow. it's twice 22. And it's basically just stories that are already in all of Ray Bradbury's other stuff. It's like medicine for melancholy and golden apples of the sun. But in my head, it was a bunch of other stories that I had only read once. And so it was a little disappointing. I was like, oh, I already own all of these fucking stories. <laughs> um, but it was also like still like it was just a sweet sort of thing of like oh my granny's book and then mm -hmm. two days later I found another one and I had to <laughs> buy it because I was like how do you not buy it so I have two <laughs> and those are the only two that exist so if you want that's one you've got to the only two buy so. one from Jenny and that's it okay so, Out of print. Yeah. so how many how many is that now are we missing any Tell us in the chat. Are we missing any? Are we down to? Oh, the last will you one? be? Will you be everybody's friend? Will you be everyone's friend? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean that. Yes. That's the uh, only one you had an answer to. <laughs> for real. Like, yeah. Like, honestly, obvious. anybody who would ask the question, "Will you be my friend?" I'm already your friend because, yes, I don't it's have a, enough. It's a really vulnerable question. <laughs> It is. Right. It's such a hard one. I'm always thinking that there's going to be somebody who's going to be like, nope. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and you'll go, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, your friend anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but really, I'll just go cry. But then later, I'll be like, like and then I was like, fuck <laughs> you. But really, I'm just like hiding under the chair and like just, just rolling in a fetal position and Okay, so what's the weirdest thing you or you and your family have done during this pandemic? I became a completely obsessed backyard bird nut, like some sort of retired, slightly crazy woman with odd hobbies. I can't retire for 20 years. What's the weirdest <laughs> thing y'all did in the pandemic? I feel like, Let's I feel like we're not. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. I don't know, it's great. So we, as, a, as a family, so me personally, I just read, like I've just in the, just in this year alone, I've read 63 books so I just never stop reading um, but uh, things that the weirdest things that I did with my family probably the very weirdest one was we got really into solving murders um and not real, real ones, ones? <laughs> not real, not Thank you, real Nikki. ones although I, I totally would be I'd be in I'd be 100 percent in but no those um like hunt a killer and puzzling pursuits and the so we get like we'd get this box in and I'd be like y'all the coroner's report came in everybody let's look and we'd like look at the autopsies and do the you know the crime scene photos and oh look where the blood is and <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous and I had thought I was like because Haley's you know she's 16 and like she's really smart um but she is you know, she's never done this kind of stuff before. And so I was like, it's, pr it's pretty much just going to be me and Victor, you know, so solving all of the stuff and, you know, she'll help. And instead she's like, oh, that's a Caesar cipher. And this is a blah, blah, blah. And uh, do you not know how trigonometry works? And, the, and I'm like, I don't, what? Mm -hmm. And so she's solving all the stuff that I 
can't. And this is like my first glance of, you know, like when you, when you start to realize that you're kind of smart and your parents are like not as smart sometimes in some things, this is my first glimpse of like, oh, she's smarter than I am. Oh, I see. I see. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't believe anybody is smarter than anybody. <laughs> I think it's different smart. I think it's different <laughs> smart. Smart is a construct. Yeah. That's, that is very I, true. That is very like, true. I, like, yeah, I think my kids have skills and specialties that are better than mine. Like Oliver can sing and dance in front of a crowd. I can't do that. I mean, I could, it would be bad, You could, but. you could do it right now. <laughs> I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it. Drink some um, more and then you will. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, like I love, I think that's one of the great things about parenting though. It's like seeing your kids, like you're like, no, they're just gonna be like this carbon copy of like one or the both of us. And then you sprout one that you're like, what the fuck are you? <laughs> like, you're it's like alien. Cuckoo. It's, yeah. yeah, they're little cuckoo birds that just yeah. show up in your nest and you're like, wait, what happened to my, okay, well, I guess this is my child now. And so, like, someone actually you? put in the chat that for the pandemic, they got pregnant. So good luck to them. Oh, <laughs> boy. yay. Yay. The babies are the best. I know. We're all moms. So we're just like, ooh, babies. <laughs> Thank you for the 12 year old. No, I'm just kidding. Also, shout okay. out to the person who's recovering from breast cancer. Good for you. Oh. I believe it was Andrea. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yay. Uh, recovery. Okay. Thank you for reading the chat. Well, okay. Okay. So, okay, well, actually, this one kind of leads into that. So your letter to the insurance company was so inspiring and something I feel every day working in healthcare. What kind of response have you received on this chapter? Let's see. Well, I did, after I sent it to my insurance company, uh, they did approve my TMS right after that. And I don't know if that's related or if it just happened to, to go at the same time. Um, I've had a ton of responsive people who have replied and said, oh my God, I thought I was the only one. Like so many people who were just like, I feel like such an asshole because I'm constantly, you know, having to ask my doctor to help me. And I'm constantly having to ask the insurance company to look at it again. And, um, and, and what I think is so great is we're all coming together to realize that actually if we are a pain in the ass in the insurance, um, way then they're more likely to say this actually is not is not working we're spending so much money with you know our marketers who have to stay on the phone to you know deal with this constantly and the you know the repercussions of people saying oh you know this is actually terrible I mean we have the best insurance that you can get like the the the, the, just the very best. And every single time they'd be like, well, maybe you need to be on a different plan. And I'm like, really? Because I'm on the most expensive one and we pay fully for it, you know? And the, and every single time they're like, yeah, that sucks. That completely sucks. And that, you know, that's the thing is there's so many, every, you know, when I first used to get on the phone and I would just be so frustrated and angry and um, what I remembered was when I used to work in uh, you know, in telemarketing and customer service. And I would get these calls from people who were furious. And I would, I wanted to be like, oh, I totally get it. You should be curious. But I had to, you know, I'm QA is listening and I had to be like, I'm so sorry to hear that. And you, and so what I've, what I have learned is that it's easier to just say, have you had this problem before? Because very often they will be like, I actually have had this problem before. And then, you know, you can say, well, do you have any hints? Is there anything that you see that you've seen that works? That's because I'm not going to give up on this. And so having somebody very often, they'll be like, actually, you know what there is, here's where you should send your, um, your, this appeal, send it to this fax number so that it doesn't have to go through this. Or, you know, every once in a while, they'll just give you some little hint of like, by the way, here's how you can get around this. So that's helpful. Kind of shitty that that's the system, it's, though, right? It's it's like I the mean, beginning of the Incredibles. Remember the beginning of the Incredibles? That's exactly. Oh my God, Vicky, we spend too much time together. I was like, oh, it's like the beginning of the Incredibles. Thing. No, I will not tell you that you need to submit form thirty-five to like the little. Oh you won't take this form. I literally. <laughs> All right, 
Vicki and I went together in that bookstore too often. The only, yeah. <laughs> this is all we've seen for the past year, so <laughs> it's fine. And that, um, <laughs> and that. Oh, it's all good. Okay, we should make so, Matt get on with us. <laughs> we should. Um. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's so many good questions. I'm so sorry. Um, what's the best advice you ever received from an editor? Oh my God, I like that one. Editor. Wow, that is a really good question. Let's see. I would say, I think the thing that was the most helpful to me from an editor was um, having, uh, my editor Amy is, very okay with the fact that I am always years behind deadline and um, I super panic about it and I you know I, I feel awful about it but I, I have these periods of time where it'll be you know several months where nothing comes out of me when I'm depressed or I'm anxious or you know something's going on and um, what she has said to me is it'll come when it comes and um, and that to me was incredibly, incredibly helpful. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that I still, you know, feel, feel like a failure when, you know, five years after the deadline, I'm like, I promise I'm gonna get it to you. Actually, it's, what's really funny is one of the chapters that I wrote, I wrote sort of on accident. So there's a chapter that if you look at the whole book as a whole, you kind of look at it and go, what's going on with this chapter? Why is this chapter in there? And it's the one about the favorite chapter one. Is. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it's the Shark Tank one, um, which is just, if you've if you read it, it's extremely just raunchy. And so I wrote it because it made me laugh and I thought it was funny. And I was like, I need to just... Um, borrow some time so that she doesn't get mad at me, even though she's not mad at me in my head. I'm like, she hates me. I haven't heard from her in half a year. And, and so I was like, I'll send this, this chapter in and she'll send it back and be like, this is not quite it, but keep working. But she'll be like, oh, this is my fault. Like I, I didn't think it was funny. And I sent it to her and she was like, this is hysterical. And I was like, no, <laughs> don't like it. Hi, Moira. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see your forehead. I know it's time for his forehead. Moira wanted to crash the party. We'll be I back. Love it. Right during Shark Tank. Don't listen. I know, right during the best chapter. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's, and then it ended up inside the book. And I'm like, well, I guess no junior high kids are going to read it, but whatever. They, they will read it. They know more than we do. Yeah, no, I think like Vicky and I, she was listening to the audio arc and I was reading the physical arc at the same time. And we both came to the store and we were like, the Shark Tank <laughs> chapter, I feel violated. <laughs> I'm talking to HR, like what happened? <laughs> no, um, yeah, that was like a lot. <laughs> yeah, but there was and then when we talked to you and you were like, yeah, no, that was like a dare. Are they gonna put that in the book? Yep, apparently I they were. Still can't believe that that's in the book. Every once in a while, <laughs> you're like, "Ah, oh, it's okay." Um, okay. I don't I'm think my three year answer this. <laughs> what is your favorite book? Favorite book, like of all time? Yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah. I think that's a lot of pressure. Wow. Yeah. Name two. Mean, just pay. I mean, oh my god. I think. I mean, if you're, if you're talking about, like, if there was just one book that I could keep with me, it would probably be like Ray Bradbury's short stories, which is uh, here, just because it's like really, it's enormous. And so it kind of has everything. Um, but I also absolutely loved, uh, it sounds like a cop out because it's a graphic novel, but graphic novels are books. Um, Sandman, like the whole Sandman I mean, every single one of them, the, the, it actually, Sandman was sort of what really inspired me so much to want to be part of the bookstore because I remember I went in um, to a comic store and there was a guy that worked there and he, he was one of those people that would look at the kind of stuff that you were reading and be like, this is what I think is next for you. Um, and so he like went out and he was like, okay, so you're, Sandman is next. But we're not going to start with the first one 
because it's not, it may not be enough to like blow you away. So we're going to start with the fourth one. And then you're going to come back tomorrow and you're going to want one through three. And then I'll slowly, you know, dole them out to you. And, uh, and he was hundred percent right. Like I just was, I was like, oh my gosh, there's other people in the universe whose heads work in weird ways. Um, it was just, and I was like, I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy who's like, <laughs> hey, I've seen what's in your, your book bag. Let me tell you what you like. I guess that sounds gross, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that was a weird voice for this guy. Right? Like, although we've met that bookseller too. Like we've- yeah. <laughs> I know him as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of what strange leads is. Yeah. Right? It is. Like, it is. yeah. I've seen what's in your book bag. Not in a creepy voice. Oh, you're doing like that too, but it's kind of weird. And like, let me tell you about something maybe you haven't heard of. Maybe you can. That's great. Uh, I think this is a good question. I'm only, I, I just want to know. Does Victor get to read the things you write that involve him before they are published? Has he ever vetoed anything? And if so, can you tell us what it was? And we, we're all squared to secrecy. Secrecy. That is such a good question. And I'm actually going to, Victor, I know you're watching this in the other room. So you need to come out and answer for this because I'm about to uh, let on to all of our deep, dark secrets. So, okay, so first of all, everybody who, whenever I write anything about anyone ever, they get to see it before it goes in um, and they have automatic veto. Um, typically, there've been a couple of things that Haley, especially when she was younger, where she was like, nah, this made me a little uncomfortable. So a couple of things that have been cut, but almost always, not only does everybody like it, um, but they're the first ones who were like, oh, and also you forgot about this and you should also add this. Um, so I'm very, very lucky that way. Um, when it comes to Victor, look, he's walking very slowly over here. Uh, Victor does not read any of my, uh, any of my stuff. Um, and when I have asked him, why don't you? He says, well, it seems like it's bad luck because I never read your other stuff and it became New York Times bestsellers. And um, I read so, after. so well, come over here and explain yourself. So what he says is he waits until after it's out and then the first time he travels, he'll buy a book it, at the airport, and then he'll read it on the plane. And so he did just, <laughs> he, well, he just traveled for the first time because we're all vaccinated now. He just went to Chicago for the first time this week. And so he did actually pick up one of my books. What did you think? Did you read it? You didn't even read I it? I did. Did it was great. Yes, I loved it. it was great. That's a great <laughs> shirt. I love it. I love it. There he is. I know. Like, like, shoulder. He's like, nope. Oh, yeah, I'm just saying, what? What? It's just yeah. nipples. Yeah. I actually think that would have been perfect. We could like put a black yeah. bar over my <laughs> eyeball. Yeah. What? What can I do for you guys? Oh, no. Are you ready for my questions? Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, what's oh. up? Victor has questions. You can have They're more. not going to kick us off at seven. I, yeah, you know. I've, got, I've got three questions. Okay. What what does 3.4 signify? 3.4, is that the golden mean? No, that's how many gallons of, of water you used two hours ago. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just FYI. So, okay. I think, well, I'm not sure it was you, but the house household. The household. Yeah, you guys things. don't get that thing on your phone where it tells you how much water you're using, awesome. don't do it. It's amazing. <laughs> it is the coolest thing ever. It's the coolest thing. I'm going to get that for the store, Vicky, so we can keep a track on that. I'll keep a track on that. <laughs> I've got one for that giant water heater we have at the store. <laughs> that just the enormous, when it, when it turns on, it sounds like a jet engine coming on. Um, be great. It's, it's what, what animal will rip your ass to shreds? Um, uh, he'll rip your ass to shreds. What is it? It's a hurry. Oh my god! Oh shit! Um, was it syphilis? Bobcat. What's syphilis? What? No. Does anybody know what a syphilis is? We're too old for that joke. I think we are. You're too. too we're too old. Victor's for off the page. I'm off the page. <laughs> and what? Um, what exactly are they going to do? Oh, a panda! It was a panda. It is a panda, right? It was a panda. Yes, that's a panda. Oh, hiding I in the Oreo. Bobcat. That's right. That's right. And the last question I have is, what exactly are they going to do? The panda? They're gonna kick us out. The bobcat. They might kick us out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't you know. know. No. Oh, it's okay. See, see these I are trick questions. These are all hard questions. I have a whole list, but but y'all are. I, I don't want to. I'm I'm. Uh, 
Elizabeth's got the got the veto button. Thank you. Thank no, you. no, no, I don't. I literally like my doorbell ring. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Bobcat was my answer to the animal that we're ripping to shreds. There's some if good it's things. not if it's not Molly. It was simple or, and Ollie. Did y'all ever watch that? Is the like the sock puppets back in like the nineties mm -hmm. on MTV? It would come on really late at night, and oh my god, it was. I was it Adult it, Swim? Like the nineties, like mid nineties. Yeah. Like before Big simple. T was born. <laughs> Yeah. I was born. I'm an Ollie, '80s baby. And Ollie show rock. No. <laughs> it was during. Oh, yeah. I, I, I guarantee you, somebody back, over here gets. Oh yeah, look, Sylvia and Ollie. Yes, it was during Adult Swim. See, I got oh, okay. part of it right. No, right. Yeah, yeah, well, it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're good. Yeah. We figured this out. I don't. This is why we have a script. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, okay, it is 7.01. We have not gotten through any of these other questions. Well, I still have a couple more minutes. Okay, great. So, um, you can log off if you, if you don't. It won't hurt our feelings if you log off. <laughs> Me? No, not you, the people in the chat. You don't log off. Don't give Elizabeth that option or she will. She'll be like, goodbye. Right. <laughs> Been like Henry. She's about to like. She just cycles out people thing. in her family. A dog shows yeah. up. Brian, like we just. <laughs> it's fine. Um. Oh, no. I feel like that question is too existential. I'm skipping it. Uh. Okay. Here's one for like all three of us. How's nowhere doing? Is there an opening date yet? I'm super bummed that I was running too bad last weekend to make it out for the small bookshop day. Nowhere is doing fantastic. Like we are, I, I had to make it an adverb. Yeah. I'm sorry, because like otherwise it would have been wrong. Um, <laughs> we're doing so well. We have a very, very small team that we're trying to grow, and we're also trying to honor that team. And there are three of us who have been doing this for the entire quarantine, and we need vacations and we need breaks. So we are. Definitely planning on opening for another Saturday soon. Probably in the next two or three weeks. We have to figure out the date. And we then, had so much fun at the Saturday. Uh, we had so I mean, much fun. <laughs> the best thing that ever happened. Like it was we like so much fun. We wanted um, to cry with joy at like being able to do our jobs the way we thought we were going to do our jobs a year ago. from the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, we're like we, wow. <laughs> our feet hurt from the Saltillo tire. But, our but we were also like, hurt. this is how we're going to lose all the pandemic weight is when we open. We're just going to be constantly moving. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, I forgot how much my job actually moves. Mm -hmm. But we hope to be, we will be open this summer at some point. It will happen. Once all of our people get rested and rejuvenated, we'll be good to go. But um I don't know. I just from the, the team that's like in the store every day, just cranking it out. Like we're so grateful to the Strangelings. Like y'all make it so easy for us to like not worry about anything else. And I don't. I mean, I don't know. Jenny can say it mm -hmm. better than me, but it's been fantastic. We're doing great. I mean, the, the the Strangelings basically, you guys. You guys keep us from the panic. You guys are like, you know what? We got the rent. We'll take care of it, you know? And so we're like, we got okay. the rent and the payroll. Yeah. And payroll. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rent and payroll. So those are the those are the, the big ones. And then so then like everything else is just gravy. We're like, oh, okay. Actually, did, did we are we gonna actually make a profit? What? We're gonna make a profit? What? So yeah, yeah. It's and it's given us the comfort to like be as cautious as we absolutely have to be. We have four people on full-time staff now. All four will be fully vaccinated as of Friday of this week, um, which I think is really important. And it's all thanks to y'all that we could be that cautious. And we're very, very grateful. Um, we, we very much appreciate it. Yes. Um, yeah. And that day that we were open was so much fun. Oh. And 
I we was had like, so much fun. It was just nonstop all day and we had a blast and we just can't wait to do that again. And like, then do that all the time will be really right. fun. And yeah, it'll be really fun. Yeah. And it's just so many places have not had the luxury that we've had of being able to be so careful and being able to take our time. And that's Amazing. because of you guys. Cause if we, if I had gotten hired a year ago and then we didn't have the book club, I would not have a job anymore. So that's, we're super grateful. And yeah, I, yeah, D- yep, exactly right. Yes, yes. Yes. And not only that, but also like you, you guys have helped me in so many ways because when I have really down times when I'm like, I can't think and I can't write and I can't do anything and I just feel like a failure, I can always be like, oh, you know what? I need to read a bunch of arcs to figure out what next month's book is going to be. And then it feels like that's actual work, even though I'm just like laying in bed all day long. But it, give, it gives me this excuse to read all week long. Not that you should need to have an excuse to read because reading is wonderful. <laughs> But it, it honestly, it has saved me this last year more than anything else, just being able to walk outside and read a book and it's wonderful. So thank you. Well, and one of the things like I think about like seeing it, this, the spreadsheet of all of these addresses of where we're shipping to. And I like, one of the things that I keep imagining, like I wanna give Jenny this gift. And like, I also wanna give the club this gift of like a map of like, 3,000 points of where the strangelings are so that you uh, they're know everywhere. like they're like y'all are everywhere and it like you think you may think there's not one in your town there's probably one in your town like and we are so fortunate in that I, I think that it would just be awesome to like have that visual representation of what that looks like but you should do that I know, I know. I keep looking into it, and actually, I probably should have emailed Victor. Yeah, like that's a thing. Like, like do. help me figure this out because there's like, an app for that. No, there is, but they I want me. They want to charge me like monthly for something. I'm like, I just, I literally just get, just the, get like, the trial, <laughs> pop it up, print it out real quick. Pop it up, go real fast. <laughs> I, yeah, but I think I love that. I think it's a great, it's a great community that has been formed here. Um, okay, I should let other people ask questions uh somebody's asking if we're gonna do in-person strangling events we (laughs) our first one was planned it was gonna be samantha irby (laughs) in april of 2020 yeah like when it works out we will definitely do that but it it just depends on like it'll be like even if we do like in yeah real- yeah 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 even if yeah. it's like it'll be recorded and everybody can participate virtually but um well, I like this question this is a very existential question ready are you ready Jenny yeah do you ever feel like you'll run out of content for future books oh my god yes um and but see okay so here's the deal is that totally happens and when I when I signed uh, the contract to write this book what was it, five years ago? Um, I was like, I don't, nothing has happened to me. I don't have anything to write about. And my agent was like, stuff will happen. You'll be okay. And so I was like, I will go out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and find some things to write about. And so I said yes to some things that I normally would not say yes to. So like my friend Laura was like, hey, did you know there's like a clown college in Austin? I was like, okay, let's do that. So we did like trapeze and we, well, I, well, here's what happens is I held onto the bar and immediately slipped off every single time because I could not hold my own body weight um, and almost strangled myself. It was terrible. Um, But the thing is, is all of those things that I was like, oh, this will make a great chapter. None of those make great chapters. They weren't funny at all. But what happened was all of these other things would happen. Like I saw, you know, a cop chafer on the sidewalk, you know, and or it's always like the stuff that you never think is going to, it's just so something weird. Then you're like, actually, this might be a funny story. So I just, I, I keep thinking when I'm like, yeah, maybe I won't have another book. And then I'm like, I totally will. Stuff's going to happen. I just know, I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be just random, crazy bullshit, but stuff happens. That's awesome. I love that. They're like, they're like we're going to send you on this adventure. And you're like, there's no material in there. <laughs> you're like, nope, I just almost killed myself in a fishing net. That's it. That's- <laughs> um, 
think maybe is there are there any comfort books that you read over and over and over could that be um, the Ray? i don't want to answer for you sorry yeah the ray bradbury is definitely a comfort book everything shirley jackson is a comfort book mm -hmm. um uh the all of the there's this graphic novel called strangers in paradise that terry moore did and it's massive as a matter of fact is it is it up there I don't know what I do. Oh, I put them in the other room. So it's like a whole, it's a whole bookshelf filled with them. Um, and then I also really like uh, scary comics, like really old scary comics. So like, I don't know if you can see it or not, but like up there. Yeah. So it's all like all the tales from the crypt that have ever come out, all of the haunt of fear, all of the vaults of horror, all of the, I love the old, like, 30s through 60s, come here, creepy, eerie, um, just ridiculous. The ones that were the, were the, um, the, what were they called? The censors came out and they were like, these are ruining children's lives. Um, those are, I find those so comforting to read for some reason. Come here then. Which cat is it? It's Haley. No. <laughs> Get in my lap. Come here. Okay, go see your dad. Victor. You're supposed to be babysitting. Like the dog's looking at me. He's not. Okay, He's so not. uh somebody wants to know why you organized the shelves behind you by color. Why I was in ISIS? What? <laughs> you say why I was no in one, ISIS? No one tweet that. <laughs> I, oh, no. for real they want to know why you organized your bookshelves behind you by cover by color okay um because I remember what the books are by what the the actual I'm that person who's like you're like know. the worst customer at a bookstore I oh don't my, know yeah you're, you're that about, person that we're like blue. oh the blue book the green right. cover with the bird like <laughs> but, but that's how I remember and you know what's funny is you know how I think everybody who's a reader has at least one. I have several of those books where you're like, I remember this book and it was so important to me, but I have no idea exactly what it was about or who wrote it or whatever. And you go online and you're like, what's this book? And you're just like, the cover was white. And I think there was a hotel and people die. It's not that one, but it's this. And, and every single time I'm, I, I always remember the cover color and I'm just like, you know, in the seventies, it was. But white. then it was, yeah. Then it's the cover that came out thirty years ago, and they re-released like three different colors <laughs> since then. Yeah, it's yeah. the one with the back of a woman, and there's airplane. There's an airplane <laughs> over, and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, let me show you the that rain. Section. Yeah, right. Or the rain boots on the front porch, and you're like, ah, okay. But like, you have a like there's one white section and then there's another white section are they hardcover paperback what's happening they're just i just ran out of room and then i was like um, oh wait more books and so you know actually so i was on a podcast oh my gosh what is her she has a name zibby owens i think is what her name is and she has this podcast called i think it's called moms don't have time to read and, um, and, and it, it was one of those podcasts where like, I could see her, even though they were just doing the audio thing. And she's like, super rich, like her, like her dad's name is on the New York Public Library, like she's a multimillionaire, maybe billionaire. And, um, and opened up, and I'm like in pajamas, and, and everything's a wreck. And hers opened up, and she's very casual. But she has this enormous furry behind her and it's color coat it's completely cut and she was like oh, yours is color coded too and i'm like y'all mine is like the trashy version of yours because hers was like she would had decorators come in it was like floor to ceiling and wrap around and i was like oh jesus yeah never mind <laughs> do your books behind you have dust jackets on them or do yeah whenever they oh, have okay them. so those aren't the boards okay no, but all um, of like we're like oh. here, these are how we have questions in different are, languages, so that's why they're they look kind of weird. Those are all what? These are all my books in different languages. So uh, this oh. shelf is just my books, and, and then there's lots of black ones over there, and then 
What is up there? What, what is up there? Dolls. I got a lot of dolls. Dolls and weirdness and uh, oh, that's the uh, the scary nun from uh, from the nun hanging out over the edge. Yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of creepy stuff in in my office because that's where it lives. Um, I don't want to ask this question, but it was asked twice in the Q and A. So, uh, I like, are you planning another book soon? I am. Ish. Okay, good. So I, I, was like, I don't want to give all. you anxiety. I just want to be like, what's <laughs> happening? No, I think I think no matter what, I probably will end up writing another book of essays. It just, hello, it just may take some time. Um, but I do actually, I, <laughs> and, um, I haven't like really announced this, um, but like just between friends, we, um, I am maybe working on like a fiction book. Uh, I have been actually working on this fiction book for literally years, which is why I've never announced it because then people will be like, how's the fiction book going? So, but, um, but yeah, sort of a gothic fiction sort of thing. And who knows if it'll ever see the light of day, but it's, it's, uh, I don't know, people who have seen it like it and it's, I'd, I'd say it's a third of the way done. So maybe. I think that's exciting. Fiction. People's, people seem intrigued in the chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they, yeah, they're like, I don't want to read that. <laughs> uh, they're like, no, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it. Well, you know what? There. So whenever you know, whenever we do the the strangelings, the you know, you get the letter that says, hey, this is our new thing, and and you know, every once in a while, somebody will be like, oh, I don't want the human skin book, or I don't want the. And they'll be like, can you not send me, you know, and, and that's like, that's totally fine because everybody has their own, you know, thing that they like. Although super props to everybody who's like, this does not sound like my kind of book, but I'll give it a chance. And then end up, you're like, oh, this is a great book. Um, but what, what I thought was really funny is when we announced um, that my book was going to be the main one and somebody was like, don't send me that book. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> why are you here? Like, somebody told us that like, like December like, we, too. <laughs> it was like so far in advance. Yeah, I was like, damn, I really don't know. want this. <laughs> don't. Mm -mm. Don't want it. I was like, well, no, I was thank like, you. Don't who like her. <laughs> who do you think Jenny is that picks these books every month? Yeah. Just what book do you think random you're in? Jenny. Yeah, we were like, we got a huge kick out of that at the store. We're like, oh, oh okay, okay, we'll pause you for April. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know who that lady is, but I don't want her book. Um, <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, so somebody wants to know when most of this book was written. Um, most of it was written about, let's see, in the year before the pandemic started, I would say about half. It. And then the other half was written in the three, two or three years before that. So it was really stretched over a period of time. When I actually finished it, uh, when the pandemic started was when I started editing. So it, it at least was finished, thank goodness, because I do not have, I'm not one of those authors who's like, oh, thank goodness I've had all this time because I've, I haven't done shit when it comes to being creative or cleaning my house or speaking of which, my parents are coming. I haven't seen them since 2019. And I'm so excited because we're all fully vaccinated now and they're vaccinated. And they were like, can we come and see you? And I was like, yes, you totally can. And my mom called and she was like, can we come tomorrow? And I'm like, you totally can. And I'm so excited. And also I'm looking at my house with like fresh eyes of, cause no one's been here. For they're coming what? tomorrow are they coming to the they can't come to the store until the weekend though until sunday yes they won't come until a lot sunday. of things to do there's a lot of things happening <laughs> they're fine with messy i mean they really they're and, and that's how it's going to be in our house i'm just going to be like that was the look of panic on me and elizabeth's face we were like know, wait we're like, what i'm sorry wait what <laughs> No, I mean, literally, it started like in our. We're using like, this as a motivator to put the store back we together. Are actually, we totally are. 
but like yeah like there's a to-do list on like on our like team communication app that's like the parents are coming <laughs> And so I'm like, they're not coming to the store tomorrow, right? Like, that would be yeah. bad. It'll be fine. It'll be good. But yay, yay for you. Are you saying Yeah. Anything? It's excited. It's ex exciting, but also, like, stressful because I haven't been around a few hours the last 14 months. And so this is going to be the first time that I'm going to be around people who are not going to immediately leave or who aren't just on my zoom and like there's nobody I'd rather be with than them but there's still of like they're gonna be here until Tuesday and I'm like that's so long <laughs> and I'm sure it, I mean they don't have anything to do they're like let's just watch tv all day they're super laid back but I'm just like oh okay, it's gonna be okay. you can actually you can bring them to the store tomorrow and we'll just like have them filling orders like they yeah, did at they my house something. in yeah. fall of 2019 it'll be fine we like Hi, Jenny's dad. We have very heavy boxes for you to lift. That's right. If you ordered a mug, my parents may have packed it. <laughs> very, very true. If you ordered anything between like October and November of 2019, it's very likely that your parents packed it. Uh, okay, I like this question. Jenny, what is your favorite sound? Oh, my favorite sound. I like the sound of like a Diet Coke being open that like, pssst. oh my God, I love that. Even though I know it's bad for you and, and all of that, but oh my God. It's the rat cancer, but it's still so right? good. Exactly. <laughs> so good. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to pick two more questions and then I think we have to wind this down. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to eat dinner. We're having a celebratory dinner because Oliver made his theater productions class. Yay! Yeah, I'm very excited. But okay, so which chapter was the easiest and which was the hardest to write of this book? Let's see. I think the the easiest one was the uh, the one that I just read, the one with all with all the tweets, just because it felt like I wasn't working alone it felt like I was having like a conversation with people as the, I would write my part. And then I would be like, oh, this is funny. This is fun. Let's add this in. And it was also really great is I reached out to, cause I didn't want to put anybody in that was like, oh, how dare you share this personal experience. And so I emailed every one of the people who, you know, and just said like, are you okay with me sharing this? Can I put it in the book? And, and what was really lovely is not a single person said no. Um, and then, and not only that, but they were like, that is now just one of my favorite things ever. And I made all of these, they saw the tweet. And so, I don't know, I think that's really lovely. I think that the, let's see, the hardest chapter, man, that is a really good question. I guess the, I think the hardest question would be the one about um, TMS, uh, just because when, when I, whenever I write about depression and anxiety, like there's something really cathartic about it. Like you get it out and you can close the, the book on it and it just feels like, okay, it's trapped in this chapter. But when I'm in the process of writing about it, it feels very much like, like I could get sucked into like over the edge. And so I have to be in a really good place mentally. And sometimes I'm not in a good place and I try to push myself too hard and I can feel myself falling into a depression or into, you know, into, you know, really severe anxiety because I'm thinking so much about it. Um, so th I think that one was the hardest one just because I had to take so many breaks and be like, okay, it seems like this would be really easy to do, but it's, is it the healthy thing for me to do? I think maybe I need to take a break and write something else or just, you know, watch TV. That's great. Um, I actually think this is a great place to end it. Maybe Jenny, give them a little teaser of Sorrowland that's gonna ship out for them on May 10th, which is Monday. And yeah, um, and we'll just end on looking towards the next month and being so excited to share this book with them. For real. Okay, so Sorrowland is our next book. It's by River Solomon. And um, they are non-binary um, and they sometimes use they and they sometimes use Zay or Faye. 
um, and I'm not going to remember that, so I'm just going to use they. Um, they have this amazing book. It is uh, all about this woman named Vern who is pregnant and is escaping this cult, and it is about everything from feminism and race and psychology and uh, gender identity and also there's monsters and there's just it is really it is really really good um and it uh yeah we're gonna be shipping it out it's getting a lot of really great reviews um Roxane Gay uh did uh, just a, a great great review of it um recently and it's yeah I think you're really gonna like it it it, it sucked me in so very intriguing and all right so yes that will ship out starting monday and um we love all of y'all and i think we're gonna say good night awesome. yeah thank you guys so much and thank you elizabeth and vicky and and especially for sticking around for another half an hour because i <laughs> seriously you guys are so nice your kids are like we're starving <laughs> It's fine. I ate my kids. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>